What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to an episode of The Locker Room. I'm here with Moses and Boy. What's going on, brother? Not much, bro. I'm here with you. Uh, where are we at? We're in Alexandria Mascot. or something? Mascot. No, don't tell them. We're in the studio, bro. Oh, we're in the studio. Sorry, <laughs> we're, bro. In we're in the st- studio. We're in the studio. We're bunkered down in the studio. One million dollar uh, studio. It's like the bunker, the actual <laughs> bunker. So yeah, just enjoying it. Mate, how you been? You know, you it's been a tumultuous, I guess, last 12 months for the Bulldogs, but you're feeling fresh. You're looking good. Everything's going well at the Bulldogs at the moment. The training's been good. What's it been like for you personally? Yeah, bro, it's been good. You know, it's um, like you said, it was a bit of a bit of a rough year uh 2017 but but look it's um it's all, all looking up you know we've uh, got everything's really refreshing we've got a whole whole new um coaching staff we've got yep. uh you know a good handful of quality new players so everyone's pretty pumped for 2018 um personally yeah feeling real good it's that you know that time of pre-season where you're, you're fit and you sort of start tapering down yeah getting ready for trials we got uh trial in about a fortnight so that's crazy yeah eh? oh man it comes so around quick. that quick it's yeah. ridiculous but yeah, look, we're tapering down now and, um, yeah, feeling good, bro. Feeling good. And so all the stuff we were just talking about before, but all the stuff that's going on, you know, board-wise, it doesn't really affect the players, hey? Like, as in, it does, they care, but they're focused on footy. Exactly. But to be honest, bro, you, you, you don't really know because you just, you yeah. only, you, you see like a snippet or something in the paper, you'll be scrolling through your phone or whatever yeah. and it'll, it'll pop up and you're like, really? You're like, yeah. Oh. But it doesn't really affect us. It's like... I think that's probably the biggest problem. Like that's that's probably a problem that happens is too many people in the board worry about football and yep. too many football players worry about the board. Yeah. I think it's one of those things where it'll just be so much more you know, it'll be so like it'll make it so much easier or seamless if board worries about the business. Board, yep. Just let them worry about the business, let them worry about the the board and, and just let the players worry about the footy, you know. Yep. I think that's like that's that's what we're there to do, play footy and that's what they're there to do is run their business. Hundred so. percent. It's so true, like they're professional in that part of their job. It's so it's like this is what they're trained to do. 100%. This, is, this is what and you're this is what trained we're to trained to do. Yeah. So yeah. Like obviously they have a you know, a duty to oversee. Yeah. Um, you know, and they I guess like the results sort of hinge on a few yep. of their decisions made at um, business level. But yeah, if we're we're professionals at, at what we do, let us apply our craft without that without that noise and yep. you know, that's We'll, we'll be able to do that to the best of our ability but yeah look I think it's a bit of a um, there's been a bit of a shit fight up there upstairs but um, yeah look I think just let it happen organically it all, all sort of sort itself out yeah and it's kind of like as long as the footy as long as you're winning really everything else doesn't matter right? like at the end yeah, of that's that, something I learned later in the career is- 100% yeah if, you, if you're winning games no one says boo it's yeah. like it's like um, you've seen like there's so many examples you could just you could toss up so many examples. It's like um, yep. you know, I heard I heard uh, Jimmy Maloney talking about it about um, just like New South Wales origin. Yep. It's like you know they were so close to win that series. If they win that series, nothing changes. It's like oh how good's this side? Yep. You know they lose. It's like no, nah, let's yep. roll the staff over. Let's um, totally. Yeah, you know, let's get let's feel. That's, they that's, were ten minutes from winning it. Hundred well. percent, and that's yeah. it. They were, they were a pass at one stage from winning away, yep. like from winning. So you know they score like they score a try or whatever they win that game and then but we're so. both cheering that they would they weren't they oh, I'm stoked yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, that's something at the war uh, sorry the Broncos that I found really good especially when I was coming through is I had no, I didn't even know like the board members I didn't know who they were I just knew there was a CEO there was Wayne and that's it I didn't know anything about that stuff and they were really good at int- like uh, insulating us from anything that was going on yeah and I think that yeah it's to your point that you know just separate the two and focus on your own kind of thing and it's that's probably, probably yeah that's yeah, you you could probably put that down to just good management, you know. Yeah. Wayne's probably one of the best at it too. He knows how to sort of like I don't I don't know him that well, but I've you know, I've Heard. spent a little bit of time with him, uh, QAS and things like that and he's so good at managing his players, he just Yeah. Yeah, and like you said, he'd just be able to insulate you from that outside noise and, and keep everything in the house and that's probably why you guys well you like won it in two thousand six. Yep. Yeah, two thousand six after that army camp I was talking about to you. Yeah, yeah, Six the days army camp. Of absolute must be, torture. Must be in the army camp. They'll, they'll be sending them back there if they don't oh win this year. Oh my god! <laughs> don't do it. Do not do it. Um, so take us back to a young Moses. You know, so you grew up in um, you br- born in Brizzy, but you did you play for Noosa? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Born in Brizzy. Oh, that was like real young. Though. I, I was born there, and I, I lived in Brizzy till I was probably like, oh man, I was a kid, like. A, Baby, I was like three or something when yep. I moved up to moved up to Noosa. Yeah, played for the Pirates at Noosa. Yep. And um, yeah, that, man, we had a good childhood up there. It was like sort of a it's like a coastal country town. Yeah. It's like um, yep. you know, like you surf or you you play footy. That's that's about it. Like you just that's that's what you do. Yeah. It's like real beachy and stuff. And 
real good place to grow up at, real family orientated. Um, not much culture. It was like a you know, fairly Anglo sort of place. Yeah. It was like, you know, just, but it was, it was real, real good place to grow up. And we had like, I got two brothers, uh, Matt and Joe. So you know, it was heaps of, heaps of front yard footy, backyard footy with the, yep. the neighbors and shit. And, just run the mark is what it was about. Mate, Noosa. It's like um, the Gold Coast was maybe 30 years ago. It's like so yeah. cruisy. It's just like, and you don't appreciate it when you're younger until you move into a, like a city city. 100%. And you're like, fuck, how beautiful yeah, was that? Yeah, that, that's me. Like yeah. 18, I was like, I don't know, 17. I, I remember I graduated on like a Thursday afternoon. Yeah. I moved to Sydney on the Friday, like Friday morning. Bulldogs were like, <laughs> You're not going to school. You're coming to train it. Oh, really? Yeah. So I was like, oh, yeah, sweet. So damn it. Yeah, I moved to um. Actually, this is pretty cool. I, I moved to Bankstown. Yeah. And I was like, I've never seen like culture before. Yeah. Like it's, I was, yeah. come from Noosa, and I was especially walk, that culture wouldn't yeah, be big. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I'm walking around Bankstown, just going like, <laughs> blowing your mind. Yeah. I was like, wow, man. Yeah. Where, like, where am I? Like, am yeah. I, like this. I could be overseas, you know. Yeah. And um, it was funny. The first night, I was in. We, we, there was, we moved into like a sh- it was like a share style it was like a like a billet sort of home we lived with um this guy named Dean Feeney like a really good dude like yep. you know took us in like showed us heaps and there was about four four of us I think that that were living there at the time the first night there was a um we woke up in the morning and there was one of the boys who moved down with us missing what and we were like what like just missing name, I think I'm pretty sure his name was Luke I can't 100% remember I'm pretty sure his name was Luke let's just say it's Luke his name's Luke. <laughs> so this guy named Luke, we couldn't find Luke, right? Yeah. He 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 moved home that night. He what? left. He left. The first night. The first night. Just went, nah, I'm not doing it. He'd come from North Queensland. He was just like, I'm out. So he... Um, well, just got on a plane. Man, he got a cab to the airport. This is what, what we heard. Like, I haven't spoken to him, but he got a cab to the airport. <laughs> he booked a flight at the counter. And was like, I'm going home. Just so a we, country lad. Yeah, there goes one. So we're down to like three. The yeah. second night, there was a shooting... At the end of our street. Oh my god! So I was just like, <laughs> "You've been fully yeah. rattled." I was like, "Fuck, man, where's this? I thought we were going come to Sydney. Like, yeah. I was thinking Bond, like Son- Sydney Bondi. Yeah, like, yeah. Surf. yeah. Like, this is grass, <laughs> you know. Like, <laughs> you got to shoot in, got to run away. Yeah. And I was like, I was and like, so what oh. was was that like confronting? Were you like in your head? Was there doubts of like maybe I shouldn't be here, or was it like no, 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 I'm I'm here? No, I think it was it was it was kind of funny. It was like it was like holy shit. It was like yeah. well, like but. It, I think it benefited me. It made me feel like real present. I was like, I'm actually here, you know? Yeah, but, okay. And in saying that, it, I had footy, like I, had, I was busy. Yeah, I was, okay. I was obviously excited. It was like my first yeah. week. Yeah, get the gear, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like my first week here and I was fortunate enough to, um, I was fortunate enough to spend time with the top scorers straight away. Like they, oh, they wow. got me down there like, yeah. That so helps I got a, heaps. Yeah, so it was like super exciting. It was yeah, like- Seeing all the boys. Yeah, there being around people you've been watching on TV yep. and things like that. So I was excited as well, which was, that helped. <laughs> So you lost a person shooting at the end yeah. of the street. Anything else? Anything else happened that first week? Oh man, no, nah, just or anything else happened over those next few months that were crazy that you're just like fucking hell. No, nah, we actually moved. Actually, or we spent about we did live there for about six months. Yeah, and then um, Dino, the guy who was looking after us, we we moved. We all moved with him. He we got moved. shot. No, nah, <laughs> thank God he didn't get shot. But we moved to um, we moved to Belmore and um. Yeah. <clears throat> which was just closer to training because we yep. at that time we we're moving facil- facilities from our home bush to Belmont. Uh, yeah, we moved in with we'd moved to Belmore and yeah, the rest is history. Oh, All yeah, right, that's that's such a like a shock. Like you lose one guy and then and then they're shooting at the end of the street and you're from this like quiet country town oh, like Sydney, uh, Noosa is beautiful beaches and everything far out. So um, yeah, growing up, when was it? Were you always athletic? You know, did you do athletics and everything like that? Were you, was it just footy or you know what was it like for you? Yeah, it was just like. Yeah, you know, sort of just like any kid. Yeah, you did your school athletics. Um, you know, you did your sprints, did your long jump, and then um, you know we always had just backyard footy. But we, for me, like footy was just that was it. You know, like yeah, I was eight when I started, nine nine years old when I started. Yeah. I was like, I'm just gonna play footy. That's it. That's all yeah. I want to do. You know, so it was like would play, would wake up in the mornings, bit of backyard footy before school, school backyard footy after school, footy training, and that was it. And it was like that was what we did every day. Yeah. Living the like, dream. Yeah, it was like next get the next day neighbors over. Okay, it's us versus you guys. Yeah. So it was like, yeah, it was just all right. Let's get on our BMX bikes and go to the next, like you know, go see the other dudes down the road. We had yeah. heaps of friends, heaps of kids. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, that yeah, was it. it was sounds like, like a sick trot. Like it sounds literally like just, the perfect. Yeah, childhood. but I, I just yeah, it was just like a it was just a real good childhood. And yeah. um, you know, now I've got kid. Now I've got kids, and it's like you're growing up in Sydney. 
You just don't see that that much. Yeah, no. Nah. It's weird. Not like, riding you know, down the road with a group that's, of mates. Yeah, you just don't see it. And like, no one just... There's, we were riding our pushies to school um, just with the you know neighbourhood kids. It's probably yep. you know, five or six of us. Jump on your pushies at, from year one to year one to seven. Yeah. Ride to school. And there'd be no like time when you need to be home kind of thing. It was like you cruise in yeah. like, you know, maybe half an hour late or whatever. That's it. You just had the street lights. It was like, yep. get home with the street lights on. Now you're like, huh. you walk around Sydney, man. You don't see. No. Nah. Yeah. No way. That's crazy. So, so we're yeah. so different. So different. Um, so when did you realize that you were, I guess, gifted like as, a, as an athlete kind of thing? Um, oh, look, I, I, I think I was just like playing local footy. Yeah. We, you know, played it. I was like, oh, I'm pretty good at this. You yeah. Know? Like I thought, oh, maybe I could, um, maybe I could make a bit of a career. And every kid obviously wants to make a career out of it. Yeah. Like I'm just going to play NRL. Yeah. But obviously, you know, it's a small percentage that actually get to do that for their dream. But um, it was, I don't know, like under sort of when I got into like under 13s, 14s, and you sort of, you know, you'd come through the back end. Like everyone's like puberty. Then you're like these fucking man childs yeah. are just hectic and that and you're like oh. yeah. anyway you get through that sort of stage and you're like under 15s you get to make the schoolboy sides and you sort of 15s uh, you get just you get recognized by clubs like and our old clubs start coming out i think yeah. it was about 15 16s they start going oh okay like you can get scholarships or whatever there's a couple of kids in our local district that were just really good like way better than me like they, a superstar they, kind yeah, of thing yeah they were superstars and they had like scholarships with the broncos or um the gold coast titans just coming around then when yeah. they come in like oh eight or something Seven, six or seven, six, I think. Seven. So yeah. they'd come in and they were like getting, um, you know, heaps of young fellas coming in and giving them scholarships. And then yeah. um, there was a guy named um, Peter Mulholland. He was a recruiter at the Dogs at the time. And he, um, yeah, he just like spoke to my manager, Simon. And it was like, look, let's get him down for a trial. Had a trial with him when I was probably in the year 10. I was like 15, 16 or something. Really? A yeah, trial then, in the year Yeah, just 10. had a trial. So you flew like, down? Uh, yeah, they flew me down for the day. You would have been so pumped. Yeah, I was wrapped. Yeah, Actually, yeah. I was that wrapped because my mum had work. And I was that pumped. They they booked my flight from Brisbane, which is about an hour and a half, two hours away from Noosa. Yeah, yeah. And mum's like, I can't take the airport. I've got work. And I was like, all right, sweet. So I, I jumped on one of those shuttle bus things. <laughs> and they, I remember it had to be that early because you have to pick up every oh. first on the Sunshine Coast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, they, and, uh, so yeah, jumped on a shuttle bus, went down there. As a 15-year-old kid. Yeah, like, played yeah, a trial. Same thing on the way home. And I wore my Bulldogs polo that I got from training the whole way home. <laughs> just frothing. Just think like yeah, hoping yeah. people I was, see I made it. I've already made it. Like, like, and an player. And <laughs> I've an made it. I've already got this shirt. Yeah. You know? like, yeah. Yeah. And then um, the next year, they were like, yep, yeah, come down, play SG ball. And I was like, yeah, sweet. And that's when I graduated school. Yep. Next day down. And yeah, it all, the whole the border started rolling. And that was it, man. That was the story. And so when you, like growing up for you, what was it like, you know, was it your parents worked their ass off or, you know, single parent or was they together? You know, what was it like for you? Yeah, well, I just lived with my mum. Yep. So my parents um, obviously split up and I um, just, li- so my mum moved up to the Sunshine Coast from about three. My dad stayed in Brisbane and all of us boys, like me and my two brothers, we moved up to Sunshine Coast with my mum. So, um, yeah, we just moved up there and, Man, we had a good child today. We yeah. just, mum just work. We're just like we're just sort of like just that that's like pretty much a it's like a standard football player family yeah, for some yeah. reason. I don't know yeah. why, but yeah. it's always that it's always just that story. It's like, yeah. oh yeah, you know, we're that family, we moved up there, we've got two brothers who lived in their house in Christian home. It's like that's a standard football player story. <laughs> yeah. But it's like a real good life. Like yeah, for me, yeah. that's a yeah, hundred percent. It's a cool Especially life. Like, you yeah, know, you're just playing footy all the yeah. time, and and you, you've got friends, you've got a community around you, other friends, yeah. and all that. And we never went without. You know, we we. We just had everything we needed. We had like our yeah. footies and had our jerseys. I, t- I tell you something now, though, yeah. especially as you're a parent, and you would know this better than me, but the role of a single mom taking care of boys, like how epic of an oh, effort bro. is that? I've got two girls and I have them for a weekend and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, man, I'm Dying. so cooked, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and she took care of, what, three boys? Yeah, three boys, yeah. But, um, but yeah, like our community was really good too. Like we just had a good community where like... Yeah. You, need to lift a footy training like you just jump in with one of the um, one of the other parents it was yeah. like a good that's that's just like a, it was a real good community so yeah. it was just um, it's something you could probably usually only get in a small town whereas yeah like a city you're probably not going to get that yeah kind of. that's, that's probably true man but um yeah look we just always yeah it was just, we just had a real fun childhood yeah like it's going to be so and it's funny because i already know it's just going to be so different to how my kids are going to grow up yeah yeah like you just like yeah pro- purely probably because of the, the demographics of of where we live, like yeah. we live in Sydney and we grew up in Noosa. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's so fun taking my kids back to Noosa and it's like, you know, they're playing in the pool or they're like, you, they're just like walking down the street and you, I see parks that I used to play in and then my kids there. are playing. And you're like, 100%. and you're like, 
This is cool, man. Fucking like, oath. This is Fucking actually oath. cool, yeah. All right, so yeah, Noosa Pirates. Okay, so you moved down to Sydney. What was that um, first 12 months like? Did you miss home much or was it like, nah, I love this. I'm so stoked to be here because you were part of the first grade squad. Yeah, well, I went through stages. I, th- I guess it was just a, a natural reaction from getting taken from, yeah. from like out of my like you know, comfortable environment. Yeah. But um, I missed it a, a little bit. But I think what kept me going was like the little achievements they get on the way. Yeah, like, that's yeah. what like kept me going. It was like, like you're playing SG ball and then you get to the end of SG ball season. You're like, oh man, like I, you know, I feel like I've done enough. Like I came down to Sydney to play SG ball and you're like, oh, I think I'm, you know, I yep. sort of want to go home now. But then you'd be like, you'd get the coach would say, okay, do you want to start training with the 20 squad? Yep. Go, oh, yeah. All right. This is pretty cool. So you'd go to the next stage and then you'd go through that and you'd get a bit stale and you'd be like, oh, I'm getting tired of this now. And then you'd go to the next stage and you'd, that's what kept me going. It was like, yeah, those little carrots at the end of the Yeah. Climb. And that was it. And I, that's just, I guess that's just human nature, you know, like a yep. little bit of struggle and then you get a, a sense of achievement. Like you've, you've done something, you've been successful in that little arena. So that, um, that sort of kept me going. And, and then I guess you get to a, um, a point where I was like, I've been here for like what, three at the time, three four years. I'm it's like, like oh, I'm home, yeah. I'm, I know, I know my way now. Like, yeah, I know some members of my community now. Like, I'm comfy. So, yep. And and I was like playing on NRL then after yeah. like three or four years. So you're like, oh, you know, this is the pinnacle of where yeah. I want it to be. Hundred so, percent. Yeah. So, so, so that was of, good. Yeah, and it's like you you get those little breadcrumbs to the kind of end of the road is the NRL is the bread, and you're kind of there. Hundred kind of percent. Yeah. yeah, and you just keep. You just keep striving to where you want to be and then you have your ups and downs in the way. But yep. it's all, all a part of it. It was like the best the best thing I did was leave Noosa when I did. Yeah. It was like the yeah, it was like the perfect time. Like I knew everyone in Noosa, knew every road path in Noosa. I was like, okay, now I can go out and explore. Yeah, exactly. And it's also yeah. like if you stay for another year or two, you might get stuck in the not like you're in that age group where you could like start oh, going uh-huh. out and yeah, yeah. Just drinking and then Yeah, like, you're just in that, yeah. And like it's I, I there's so many people that yeah like like you said they get caught up in that um like Bubble Noosa's just home I'm just gonna stay in here now yep. like, I'm so comfortable here and you just yep. get comfy and you're like you know what I got my carpenter job like this is just what I want to do and there's nothing wrong with that like, yeah. people love that like that's if that's what they might have just yeah. to be that carpenter but and there's no pressure you yeah, just get to exactly. chill yeah. hang with your mates yeah exactly but for me it was like you know I always wanted to do this like mm. I'm just gonna go do it and yep. it was the best thing that happened to me really like I've I feel like it helped me mature so much quicker like moving out at 17 and we're sort of like cooking our own food and finding our own way to train and work or whatever you're doing it was like we didn't have a, i didn't have a car at the time i was just getting on buses and trains oh, really? and like just walking around this town this city just going did you have to work whilst on. you were training full time yeah well i was um i was working at the club yep. so they gave oh, okay. they sort of looked after me in as in a way like they sort of they really nurtured me into it they gave me a job at the club yeah perfect with the first grade squad like i was my job was pretty much running water bottles out to really? the first grade squad yeah that was my job so <laughs> yeah and it was like so that that was that was handy obviously being in that environment yeah i did that for about a year just and running then, water bottles out really just it, doing man, yeah. like odd jobs for yeah, the, it was for just the like boys doing, it was like I was work. I was like a manager's offside. I was like that. So yeah, that was just like cool. doing little odd jobs and yep. met so many of the boys and they they like you know they they really helped me out and it was just the whole environment, the vibe of of watching at that level what they have to do to be where they are. Yep. And um, and then you know once I got a crack, I I, you know, I was I was working there running water bottles out when like you know Josh Morris was playing there. Oh, you know, now I'm playing with him and like, yeah. it's pretty cool. But all, all the boys still g up. Like, yeah, yeah, they're yeah. They're like, I'm like, do this. And they're like, no, you used you're to fucking rub me water yeah, bottles, yeah, you asshole. Yeah, you're <laughs> like, shut up. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's funny. That, that, that's, um, it's actually funny how like you get these like jobs that you got and at the time you don't think, you just think that they've just given you, like thrown you a job, but there's always a plan to it. Like they would have been like, let's give him this job that introduces him to the boys and gets him involved with the club in that yeah. sense, you know what I mean? Rather than get you a job pouring beers down the road or whatever. Yeah, of course. You know what yeah. I mean? Well, the, and especially like being at a club like our club, it's a it's a really well run club. It's yeah. you know it's it's um they like the way they do things and the way they bring their juniors down is it's it's really successful in how they've done it. Yeah. And like a lot of the boys that are playing even our squad today, a lot of the, the good players are, f- are from out of town. Yeah. Like we had a few really good country like Josh Jackson come in. He come in like maybe. 12 months before I was there. 
but they brought him in to do the similar thing for him. Like, you know, they, they bring him in from the country, or bring him in from Queensland, wherever they come from, and they real nurture him and hand raise him and, and teach him the ethics of how they want him to be. And yeah. like, they help him grow up to be a man, like sort of thing. And it's, yeah. it's funny saying that because it's like, oh, you don't really see it while, you, while exactly, you're doing yeah. it. You're like, they're just giving yeah. you a job. Yeah, they're just giving you a job. You don't yeah. really see it. But then when you yeah. get to where I'm at now, and you look back and you're like, it was all planned. Like, yeah, it was all, it was like, all... like it could have been so easy for them to just go. Yep. Go dig holes with um, one of these sponsors or whatever it was. Yeah, like go yeah. clean the leagues club, whatever. It's so easy for them to do that. And you look at it now, and you're like, oh, that was you know really good how they did that, and I, that's why you appreciate them. Well, look at look at um you know Jack Josh Jackson. He's you know, yeah, I, you know yeah he's killing it. Like he's played for Australia, played for New South Wales, captain yep. of our club. Like and like that, that, literally the perfect scenario. You know, you get this guy young, you bring him through the system, you mold him how you yeah. the, the the values that you feel yeah. the best values and that. Yeah, yeah. And then you know I'm from all that I've heard about. Josh Jackson is yeah, yeah. like the, the boys absolutely love him, so you know it's like but yeah, he's just he's just like he's he's just just a bull, he's a bulldog, you know what yeah. I mean? Like he's like if you know if you've been at the club and you get taught about the culture of a bulldog, they could if they did, couldn't mention name if you just heard if you just got them to explain what a bulldog's about, yeah, you say oh you just explaining Josh Jackson, that's yep. what you'd be like, you'd be okay. like that's Jacko, like yeah, okay. he's just that guy. Who's, he doesn't say too much, but he just. Everything he does is just like a hundred percent. Yeah, you don't want to wrestle with him. He just like like <laughs> guess, yeah, you go in a group. You're like, who's wrestling? He's Jackie. You're like, oh, fuck. I know I'm gonna go hundred percent. This is gonna hurt. You know yeah, what I mean? Like yeah. he's just so strong. Yeah, yeah. Everything he does is so professional. Like he gets there so early and just does everything right for his body and just he's a real professional. And that's the reason he's at where he is right now. And did did you were you surprised when he was named captain or you guys kind of you could oh, sense nah, that it was gonna nah, happen? Yeah, it was. He's he deserved it. You know, he was. It, it wasn't a surprise at all. Like yeah. everyone sort of knew. Okay. Everyone would have known it was like going to be because he's just like I said. He's just that's what he does. He's, so he was already naturally a leader within the squad. Oh yeah, certainly yeah, yeah. definitely yeah. He's one hundred percent. He's a real leader. He's, yeah, and he's like a na- he's a natural leader. He doesn't try to lead you around. Yeah, and that that's what works for him. Like, he's just a natural leader. He just does what he does. What he does. He just does him and everyone just follows. Yeah, similar to like Lockyer. He wasn't someone that sat there and like talked heaps blah blah blah. No, he just yeah. like. He'd just win an Origin game with a drop goal that's mad or something like that. He'd just do something <laughs> just these like, actions, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so you get down, and and what, what was the kind of the roughest period in those first few years? Any injuries? Was there anything like? Because it's not smooth sailing, you know. Like it's yeah, it's tough. Yeah. It's those first few years are extremely tough, as you said. When you moved down, one dude went home. There's shooting at the end of the street. Like for me personally, like I was on freaking four, five grand a year. Then the next year, I was on like twenty five. I was on like no money. Yeah. Working a job, doing full time. What was it like for you? Yeah, yeah, that's the same process as me, man. I was like, I think I got about five grand to come down or something like that, and that went to my the Dino. That was yeah. That was for the rent, you know. So, but yeah, I snapped my ankle after the SG ball year, and um. I didn't. I, yeah, I did like did like syndesmosis, my ankle sprain, whatever it is, whatever you want to call it. But it was, yeah. you know, I injured my ankle, and that sat me out for about that sat me out for about eight weeks, eight to ten weeks, and then um, I came back from that, and I, I was fortunate enough to. There was like a lot of injuries in that in that period of time for the twenties, so yeah. they put me straight in the twenties, and I was like, oh, I was, I was frothing. Yeah. So I come back from injury, and. Um, I had a real successful 20s debut. So I was like, oh, that kept me going as well. So that, that's what I was talking about. Those yeah, little carrots. Little things, yep. Those little carrots just kept me going. I was like, oh, okay, this is good. Like, yeah. This is going to plan. And imagine if like, if you didn't play well, you'd be fully rattled. You'd be like, confidence gone. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, 100%. You'd yeah. be like, oh, I got injured. Like, yeah. this is just not happening. This is going to keep happening. Yeah. But there's just those, I think it's just those little like moments of adversity that, that just kept, like, I had like a few little injuries here and there, like my ankle or whatever, and that sort of kept bothering me. But, I think it was those little things of adversity that helped me a lot. Now looking back at it, yeah, it's like so easy in hindsight yep. to say that, but it, yeah, just like for any of the young fellas that I know tune in or whatever, they did, yeah, they're little bits of adversity. Like they're, I feel like they're meant to happen sometimes. Just, yeah, they're meant to like. And when they're happening, you don't feel that way. You're like, this is no, it's like this is fuck. Like, yeah, this is fuck. Yeah, it's all over, you know. But, yeah, and I'm not like a, I'm not a faithful person either. Like I'm not like a, like I'm not like oh. You know, this is definitely going to happen. Yeah, I'm yeah, sweet. I'm yeah, all good. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. just like, yeah, he's got to. I'm just like, okay, that's just. I'm, I'm just like, oh, I'll just stick with it and see what happens. Sort of thing. But, yeah. Um. Okay. So you, what was the the first time you got just like signed into the first grade squad? Was it 2013? Uh, it was 2000. Yeah, we in 2012 or 13. It was when Des first come over. So 2012. So Des yeah. come to the club 2012, and um, yeah, he just he just threw me in straight away was he, he was did like, he just call you and say look i'd like you to come into the first grade squad yeah know, he, oh, we did, i did a pre-season so i yep. did a, like a full sort of full-time part-time 
how they do it now. Yep. And um, and Desi's just like a real good coach, you know. But he he came over and he had like he he felt like he was way ahead of the game when he came over. He sort of his first year, 2012, he come in and sort of said like, this is how we're gonna play. Yeah. And we're just coming off like a pretty poor season too in 2011. We just missed the eight, I think, in 2011. So when Desi got there, it was real refreshing. Everyone was like, oh, okay. And all on board. Yeah, everyone was all on board. He didn't really bring in new recruits. I think he only bought T-Rex with him and he bought a handful of new staff members. Yeah. But everyone just bought in. Yeah. And um, and I was so excited because it was my first year being full-time. Yeah. So I was so excited. And um, we went to the grand final, yeah. Yeah. We played Melbourne in the grand final. I didn't play that year, but I was there every week, like, yeah. you know, training, like, in the squad every week so that was that was pretty cool that was a good year what, what's something that you remember from that year vividly that year well actually something I do remember from that year was we all three grades so our 20 side I was, I was the captain of our 20 side our New South Wales Cup side yep. and our NRL side all got minor premiers fucking hell yeah so that was um that was something that was real good it was just like a like you can imagine how successful the club was going. Oh, wow. And like yeah. the whole vibe of the club. like, And not only the club, like at the Bulldogs, if you're going good, if your club, if your team's going good in the Bulldogs, the whole community is like... On board. Jumps on your back and yeah. it's a vibe. Like everywhere you go is a vibe. You, yeah. go, to the, you go to the coffee shop, you're like, oh, don't pay for this. Like it's, it's just a vibe. Like yeah. Everyone just gets up for community, it. Really good community behind it. Oh, yeah. It's such a like multicultural, like diverse community. Yep. Just like... There's so many different cultures, and but it's so funny that everyone sort of rallies around the Bulldogs. Yeah, like that's so, a yeah. one meeting point. Like, yeah, you know, yeah it's like, something that everyone has in common in the community. Yeah. It doesn't matter, like, wherever black, you're from, white, whatever. Yeah, whether you're Jewish, whatever you are, like, whatever yeah. religion, color, race, whatever. It's everyone sort of has that, the Bulldogs in common. So yeah. That's cool. So when we're going real good in 2012, we made the grand final, everyone was on, was board. on board. The streets closed. They, they that's closed. Crazy. They closed Bell Road. It was that hectic. Man, yeah. imagine some of the celebrations in that, like drums and stuff. It'd be yeah, sick. Yeah, it was it. It was like food, drums. It was just all happening. It was like a big party. It was like a party like a from the finals, from the first final. So like September to October, a month of like... Just party. Yeah, the party is <laughs> That's good. sick. It's unreal. That's so good. Okay, so next year rolls around and this is the year you make your debut. What was the kind of lead up to the debut? You know, how were you feeling? Was your footy going really well? You know, what was the phone call like? Well, it was a... Um, I'd been 18th man a couple of times. I'd been 18th man. And um, we were, uh, was it, it was around six, I think. We were, we were playing Newcastle that week. And I was 18th man again. But I'd always been back up to play seven or six behind yep. Reynolds and Hodgkinson. It was a Friday. We are playing on like a Saturday. And on the, on the, th- on the, Friday, on the Thursday, we are doing a, um, I think we are doing, must have been defence, crossfield kick. Lafayette jumps up. Gets hit, hits the ground, gets knocked out. What? He got knocked out at training on a Thursday. Just like from just hit the ground, he got knocked out. So he goes what? in. So he had to go in on the Friday to do a HIA yeah. assessment. He failed it. So Des calls him and goes. He called me on the Saturday morning actually before the game and goes. Okay, um, so wait. So you're yeah. You're just chilling. I, I was getting just, ready for New South Wales Cup. I was playing twenties. Oh 20s. no, New South Wales Cup. Yeah, we've yeah. been playing New South Wales Cup. Yeah. yeah, I was getting ready for New South Wales Cup, and um, yeah, I was in the morning. And he just goes. Uh, Desi called me up and was like uh, Laugh failed his HIA um, so you're playing centre and I was like oh yeah I was like oh yeah sweet had you and played centre like, much before? Mm, <laughs> handful of games in the 20s but oh, not much no. and I was like oh yeah sweet so I looked to a playing Newcastle like who am I up against I lay low I was like fuck I was like he's massive yeah, I was like, he's ma- and he was like going, going good now they had like yep. Darius Boyd they were pretty good at the time uh, Wayne was coaching him yep so I was like, fuck, Wayne's not dumb. Like, they're just going to be coming at me all day. Like, but, <laughs> but I was like, how yeah, good. Like, I was yeah. vibing. And I was like, mm. Wayne on our debut. And um, yeah, we won that game. I was frothing out. Really? Yeah. It was so, good. Senna, okay, you get the call. What was the call like to your mum? Like, was that just like. Yeah, I was sort of just. Well, because it was so late, no one could come because yep. he told me in the morning. So I was just like, but it was, I was like, oh, I'm playing tonight. But mum's so. My mum's so like, oh, okay. Like, she does. She's, she's never really like loved love, like she just always supported us in whatever we did it is, didn't so. matter if you were like doing little athletics or doing NRL so she's just like happy that yeah she was like oh okay happy. cool oh, that's yes. unreal like yeah, if you're yeah. happy I'm happy she was sort of like that lady yeah, like yeah. she wasn't like she doesn't know. doesn't fully yeah. get into this footy side of yeah, it yeah exactly thing, like she was fun. happy she was happy for you to win the race in yeah. under eights as she was like when you were making NRL debut yeah which is kind of a good way to have it because like you, yeah well, she you, was a supportive yeah, man. Yeah. she was like well, whatever good stuff um, 
oh, I'm going to work too. Like, but, but I was like, yeah, I'm going so to work because I supported you yeah. my whole life as a single mum. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was a good call, man. It was like it was like a dream come true. It was like you're just waiting for that call. All right, then, you're in the dressing sheds at Newcastle at home. No, we're at home, ANZ. Yeah, ANZ. Like, what's it like? You're looking around. You see your name on the locker there. Yeah, it's, yeah. The, it's like everything's clean and mad compared to oh, 20s actually. You'd be playing. In no, yeah, team. but way better. Yeah, way yeah. better. Yeah. What was it? What were you feeling? Uh, Looking across, there's yeah, there's Josh Morris getting kitted up or something. If he was, was he, yeah, he would have yeah. been in the club then. Yeah, he, he was playing, yeah. 2014. He was playing, he played left centre. I was playing right. So, you, right what was it like? It was just, like, to be honest, man, it's so hard to remember. It's a blur, right? Yeah, it's such a blur. And, yeah. like, it was, I don't remember so many parts of that, that day, but I just. I just remember I sat with Jimmy Dimmick a lot that day because he was our defensive coach. Yep. And he was just like, okay, this is what we're going to do. Like, this is how we're going <laughs> to do it. And I was like, oh, yeah. So I was like, uh, I was like, yeah, I was like, oh, you know, let's just, let's just get out there. Yeah, just... yeah. Have a dig. And um, at the time, I was living with I was living with Renny Matua. Yep. And I called Ren. I was like, Ren, I'm playing tonight. And he's like, fuck, that's mad, bro. Because like, he, I hadn't debuted and we'd live, we were living together for probably six months before that. So we'd always talk about... He, obviously, he played over 100 games at the yeah, time. So yeah. we'd talk about me having my debut and all this yeah. stuff. And I was like, you know, how good is this? Like, and then he, he said to me, I go, oh, I'm playing against Lord. And he, he's, he just said to me, he goes, just keep your feet. That's it. That's all he said. Really? He goes, just keep your feet, bro. He goes, you'll be sweet. Yeah. And it was, it was sweet. It was good. Like, it, was, really? it was a good debut. Yeah, I was happy with that's, how it went. It's yeah. crazy. Like, it's such a small thing said by such a, like, a veteran, especially with the Bulldogs yeah. and Rennie. And it like it resonated so strongly with you and it helped you so much. Just yeah. keep your feet. So but, simple. Yeah, the thing is, when you asked me before was like what I remember from that day, yep. that's one of the only things I remember from that day. Is Renny Matua saying, keep so your feet. When I spoke to Ren and he goes, just keep your feet. I swear that's a, that's one of the <laughs> only things I remember. That's crazy. That's yeah. how, it was just such a powerful thing. I was like, Fuck, that's a good idea. Yeah, like, just yeah. simple. Just keep, just don't don't go too yeah, low yeah. too soon. Yeah, don't he go goes, just high. keep your feet. He goes, he's got a good fan. Like he was saying, like Lewis has got a grouse fan. He goes, yeah. when you get up there, just keep your feet and you'll be sweet. That's like, crazy. Oh, wow. It's like, and, and I, you know what's crazy is like, you know, you're, I'm sure a debutante will have a similar moment probably with you. Yeah. And you're going to say to him, just do this. And he's yeah. probably going to be, and like that Rennie would have been the same when he, he would have been not thinking of how much impact that was going to have on your life or, well, it did have a lot yeah, of impact. Yeah, he wouldn't even know. He wouldn't even know that yeah. that had an impact. And yet, yeah, like that's... you're sitting there going, fuck, that's such, all right, sweet. Yeah, but, and yeah, I've just rem- always remembered it so vividly. That's the one thing I remember yeah, like super clear. Just keep your feet. Yeah. Oh, right, that's crazy. It's a metaphor for the rest of your life, bro. That's it, just yeah, just keep, keep your feet, feet, bro. I still can't tackle, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, you, you make your debut and then what was the next few weeks like for you? Uh, so after my debut, Laf come back the next week. So I, yep. I dropped back to New South Wales Cup and um, and that year, bro, I was in and out. Uh, I was in and out. Oh, no, that was it. Yeah, that was it that year. And then, um, so yeah. Oh, no, I ended up playing nine games. Sorry, I played nine games that year. I was in and out, yep. in and out that year. So this was this is actually 2014. So this was 2014 because that year, my debut year, I played in the grand final. So I got the call up. So like I'd been 18th man for about five weeks or something. Like I was 18th man yep. for like five weeks. And, and uh, you'd already played in it at this stage. So yeah, I'd already played. Chomping at the bit yeah, to get back I'd, out I'd there. played about... I played about eight games. Yep. I played eight games in NRL. So I was like frothing. I was like... And also like if you hadn't played in NRL yet, you're just happy to be there. But now that you've played in NRL, yeah, you're like, like oh, I want to be on anymore. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're like, all right. I really, but I'd, I'd been 80th man so much. I hadn't played much footy. I'd played probably... I played probably a game in about six weeks. I was like not game fit at all. Yep. And um, we were playing, I think it was Penrith to make the grand final. It was a playoff with Penrith to make the grand final. And um, Mick Ennis broke his foot that game. And we were all just like, fuck, yeah, like, like one of your main skipper. Guys. Like, yeah. like, we won. So everyone was like, we're going to the grand final again. Like, yes, yeah, 2014. Like, we lost 2012. 2014's our year. We won it in 2004. It's 10 years since that happened. It's like, yep. it's meant to be, you know? It's like a little home and thing. Yep. And um, obviously, no one knew the extent of Mick's injury. Like, he was just, he hurt his foot. Yeah, just come off, put the ice on it, rest it up to to Wednesday. Come back on the field Thursday, do captain's run Saturday. GF GF Sunday, win the trophy and fucking have a party for yeah. the next week. Whatever <laughs> it was like, yeah. Anyway, next day, actually, I was in the shed. And I, I think Desi must have had an idea that Mick's injury wasn't good. Yeah, because I was in the shed after the Penrith game, and Desi turned around to me and goes, "Make sure you're ready if I need you." And I was like, "Fuck!" Did he just say like I might be playing a grand final? And I was like, like obviously, like, yeah, sweet. Of course. I'll see, I'll say, Des, yeah, sweet. Yeah. 
And um, so, yeah, we go to go to train that week. Mix broke his foot. He's out. And I'm playing in the grand final. I'm playing hooker. Okay. So I'm like... Had oh, you played any play hooker? For, not that year, no, not once. Yeah. And I hadn't played for about five weeks too. Mm. So I was like, oh, yeah, sweet. I was like, fuck, how could, how could it be? I played... <laughs> Pretty much, I played SG Ball. I'm only, I'm only playing, yeah, I'm only playing Sam Burgess, George Burgess, Tom Burgess, Luke Burgess, Sutton. <laughs> yeah, it's like a small pack. Yeah, whatever. Tiny I was like, pack. I was like, yeah, it'll be, I'll be sweet. <laughs> <laughs> and um, anyway, yeah, the week just went on, and uh, grand final week. This obviously, like, I was at a grand final. We did footy show, grand final breakfast, all that stuff. Yeah. Then it was grand final day, and I was like, fuck. it's probably it was probably where I was at in my mindset was probably the best thing ever because I wasn't too nervous because I was like alright new position sort of thing I was, I was shitting myself don't get me wrong but yeah, but not to the point where you're like rattled that you couldn't yeah, play yeah I felt pretty good yeah and um, and anyway Desi goes like you're playing you got to play 80 minutes like because <laughs> like we've got no one else yeah like, yeah. like you had, the way you want to play is like yeah see how we go um, yeah and end up playing I end up playing about 70 minutes because I was just cooked yeah, I was just cooked. 70 minutes every in Every tackle, without just going boom. I mean, How I many like, tackles did you do that game? Oh, off the top of my head, I think I did 49, I think. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. I was like 47 maybe, something hadn't like played that. Fifth, hadn't played in five weeks and you played yeah. hooker. And I was cooked. Yeah, I was just like, oh. I was yeah. like, yeah, I'm having a breather. Yeah. But we lost that game. But um, that's probably the most significant, obviously the most significant game of my career so yeah. far. Yeah. And what was the moment like for you when you're running out in the grand final and looking around going, and that was South Sydney's drought? Yeah, you know? yeah, that was it. Well, the the most memorable memorable thing from that would be um there's probably two moments that that really um that I really remember vividly was the warm up underground because you always warm up on the field at ANZ Stadium but yep. on the grand final day you warm up underground so the warm up inside when you can hear the the stadium rumbling yep. from the top and you're like fuck that's a lot of people out there <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. there's a band going I think Seal was playing that day or something <laughs> and um so that was that was pretty crazy and then when we got out there we did national anthem and where we did the national anthem, where it was like um, we all stand there, you know, arms around each other, and um, and like you can see, I could see my mom and my brothers and that there. And I was like, oh, this is such a big moment in my life. Like, yeah, that's that's what made me realize it. I was like, when everyone was there, I was like, oh, this is such a big moment in my life. Yeah, like, we could win a comp. Yeah, and, and it's like, a grand final. Like, You're on the grand final. Nineteen games deep. Yep. in my career, I was like, yep. this could win. I, I could win a comp. And then um, another from that week. Because uh, cause I was living with Ren too and Ren had already had so much good advice to me. I remember another really good point he, he told me. He said to me, he goes, um, he said, because I think it was his first year, 2004, when he won a comp. And he said to me, he, he, what his best bit of, bit of advice I've ever got, he said, he said, listen, don't take it for granted. He goes, the year that I won the comp in 2004 was my first year and I just thought it would always happen. I just thought, oh, fuck. Yeah, we'll go back. First year I won one, I'll win another one for sure. Yeah. Never won another one. He said, don't take it for granted. He said, this could be the only time you ever play in a grand final. That's what yeah. he said to me. And I was like, okay. I was like, wow, this is like, fuck, this is big, you know? Like, yeah. And that really honestly made me like click in. I was like, fuck, I really want to, you know, win this game. Yeah, yeah. Because I went from being like, just happy to play in a grand final when like just during the week, I was sort of like, oh, I just, just like, happy I'm to happy be to play, there. win, lose, a draw. Like, yeah. I'm playing. And then when he told me that, I was like, well, I really want, like, yeah. I want to win. I'm not just happy to be here. And I had, like, that sort of really clicked me into gear. But yeah. unfortunately, lost. But yeah, like I said, it was probably the most significant week, definitely game, but most significant week of, of my career. Is there something you remember out in the field during the game at all? Yeah. First, we in early in the game. Reynolds was being Reynolds and did, like, is he now grubby Reynolds? Just <laughs> come up to put a shot on, on, um, on Sato. Yep. Popped his shoulder out in, like the first... Housekeeping. I don't know if you can see the towel. Thank you. Get the towels in there. She's keen, but. She was for sure. 100%. Good <laughs> Coming later. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> um, what we talk? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Reynolds' shoulder pops out. Yeah, it was like so. For early in the game, his shoulder pops out, like putting, trying to put his shot on um, on John Sutton, and yeah. we were just like, "Fuck, there goes a five A." Yeah, yeah. Win the grand final, but him being him, just like popped it in, like they popped it in, and he was sweet. He just played the whole game with the, like a dislocated, like with the 
So he ended up getting shoulder. surgery like two days later. Wow. And, um, yeah. And so some no, no one even knows about that really. Like, as in I they think would it would come out it. later, but he yeah he literally played. He would have played about seventy minutes with a like torn rotate whatever he did to it. Completely torn. torn. Yeah, yeah, he got yeah. A, he got a reconstruction like two days later, two three days later. And that's stuff like you know people love and hate uh, Reynolds, but. Like that stuff you don't see of like the passion that he has. That's the positive side of the passion. Like yes, he can make some errors sometimes, and in you know the passion can get the better of him. But look at those moments that are, you know, if he's had a one, oh, he yeah. would have been a hero kind of thing. Oh, hundred percent, and that's it. Like especially with Josh, the good out, good outweighs the bad. Yeah. Every day of the week. Hundred percent. I mean? Like he, yeah, like he said, he's just he's just a, like he's a high energy, fast tempo player. Just yeah. Like when you if you're behind the sticks and you're going, you know, you're down. 30 nil or whatever and you, everyone you know what the vibe's like yeah. and you're just like Fuck, that's, that's, you see the showers and yeah let's just knock man, on the head guys he'll get you going yeah. he'll get you going from there he's just like ready to run yeah he'll be back first first time back to halfway kick the ball off like just yeah. loves it just lo- he's just a, he just loves his footy man he loves footy like, yeah. and he's, whole, he's from Belmore so like I mentioned before the whole community thing he grew up with that yeah. so he um, fully understands he's, a, he's like yeah he's a, yeah, he just he, they just love it. His whole family loves it. He loves his footy. Um, okay, so oh well, speaking of Reynolds, like, what was it like losing a guy that is so integral into the community? Like, I, I understand, you know, there's footy is footy. You're always going to eventually lose yeah. someone. But what was that like for you personally? You know, especially you'd played so much halves, you know, with him. Yeah, it was it was, um, you know, well, I, I, because I think because we had a bad year, I was kind of happy for him for some reason, like for some sensation. I, I, I was really happy for him to get an opportunity, opportunity to, to you know, get fill that role that, um, you know, that to go into a club where he was really wanted and, and demanded. Like he was really de- like, you know, he went to the Tigers, and I remember having this chat with him. He just said, "I said, oh, I was, I was talking about why the Tigers, I think it was," and he just said, "He goes, you know what, man? He goes, they just, he goes, Ivan just really wanted me there." Mm. I just felt like I was really wanted there, and yep. and I think for him that's that's so important. And they'll get they'll get so much out of him, like oh, yeah. even off the field, like the bloke just he just there's so much here he does that you don't really see. Like yep. he does, like man, he's always visiting a hospital. He's got like he's always he's always just got time. He's mm. always got time for people. Like he's a, he's a real community um, based guy. And I think that's what keeps him going. To be honest, I think that must be his his ticker. Like. Just helping people and is that it, kind of family vibe. Kind yeah, of he's just like he's just from a, he's from a. I don't know his whole family, but I know his I know his mum. Like his mum's a real good, real nice lady. He's just from like a. He's just had a. I think he's just had a good upbringing. To be honest, he's like yep. he's very respectful of people and he's, he's and he's fun. You know what I mean? Like he's real fun. Yeah. Like he loves a beer. Like you can get on the piss with him and have a real good time. Yeah. But then, like you can. He, you can also he, be serious and everything. He, oh as well. yeah, he'll be, he'll be at the hospital with the kids for two hours and he'll be. Just doing stuff like that, so yep. he's um he'll be a great gain for not only their team like as a player, but for their community as well and yep. for their for their culture. I think you I think you'll be like a real pillar for their culture going forward for sure. Yeah, and I think I agree with you in the fact that you know, regardless of the standard of footy you want to play, not saying that he can't produce extremely good footy because he probably will, but even if he doesn't, the fact that he's coming every week to win, yeah, I think the Tigers need that right now. They need someone yeah. in that hard position that's coming in. Not that they didn't have that, but we just know that Reynolds is someone yeah. that can turn that up to a million. You and he'll teach the young fellas that as well, like because that's what he taught me. Because I was when when um when Reynolds started playing, he was probably twenty two, and I was about seventeen, eighteen at the time. Yeah, so I was watching him. You know what I mean? So. I grew up watching him with that attitude. Yeah. That, you know, just that real up tempo competitive competitiveness. Like he was yep. always competitive. Like yeah. I used to watch him and Mick Ennis like nearly blew a train. I was like, they're just competitive guys. And it was it was real good. That's yeah. like, that's like what you need in a guy. Like the so. healthy competitive vibe. Yeah, it was just yeah, he's just a competitor. So yep. I think that's what he'll take to the Tigers. He'll he'll show them how to be competitive, teach them that competitive way and show them how to win. I, I, I really I really do. I I hope he um I hope he's real successful at the Tigers. Yeah. And um, so for yourself, you know, you made you debuted and then you played in the grand final that year, and then I think it was like 2015 that might have been like your it was your year, you know, or was it 2015 or 16? Yeah, it would have been yeah, sort of both, like though, yeah, probably yeah. both because I 14 I played in that grand final, so I sort of had a bit of expectation to come in and have a yeah. starting spot, and uh, I think 15 would have been I would have been more 16 because we still had Hodgkinson and 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 Josh, and so that 2015 was a bit of a year where. It was the whole. It was the whole three into two headlines every week. Yeah, you know, it was okay. like the like, when are they going to give you a shot? Who's going to play? Like it yeah. was. I was just. It was. It was sort of like 
one week it was me and Hodgkins playing, next week yep. it was Josh and Hodgkins playing, then the next week it was me and Josh playing. I was just like, it was like, it was two and a three. That's yeah, it, you, know, you couldn't and, really um, build that combination over the, over the yeah. year. Yeah, and we had an up and down year. We didn't, we didn't play bad. We didn't finish. We made, I think we got knocked out first week of the semis or some second week of the semis, but we, um, we just didn't play that good, that consistently. And then um, 16, it was like, Hodgkins was signed with the with the with the Knights with Newcastle, and it was um it was me and Josh in the house, and that was like you know we were like he, he's, he's like yeah. here's your spot like, yeah here you go you've got your chance you and Josh in the house, and that had been that was 2016, and uh, we made the what well, we we made the semis but we didn't have a great year like we we started well we we played real good si- early 16 we started really well and then we bowed out hard in the back end of the year yeah, so okay. it was like from yep. we, we we finished we may maybe finished six or something like that and we we're in position for the finals and then we lost like round 22 23 24 25 Fuck. 26 out first week of finals so we yeah. just lost like five six games in, in a row. row or whatever at the back yep. end so everyone was just like big downer coming into 2017 and then yep. like how are they going to respond so in 2017, it was like, how's how are they going to respond? It was, you know, it was lots of controversy. Yeah. Um, and it was, you know, a bit of, bit of, um, it was just adversity, really. It was like around me and Josh, oh, are they the right people for the job? Can they do it? Yeah. 2017, and we got in 2017, and we had a shit year. So yeah. it was just like, oh, it was like, it was felt like it was just the, it was like, it was like, it was a real tipping point of, of, of like the, the club shifting a new direction, I think. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. In as a as a whole playing group though, like like me and Josh didn't have well, well, I didn't I didn't have a great year, but like our whole team sort of was bound out and you know what it's like. When when the just when like, you people, know the confidence is down. Everyone's confidence yeah, is down. It's so hard down. to get it back on. Yeah. It's like momentum. You just yeah, you know, as soon as the momentum stopped, we're just like, how do we get it out? And then I think you can't blame uh, myself and Josh for getting into that moment, like getting down, but I think that's when you have to rely on your halves to be able to pull you out of that out of that slump and get yeah. you going again or get yeah. you back on the rise. And that's what that's what I failed to do as a halfback. Yeah. As a halfback, I was trying to play that style that Hodgkinson played for Josh to play his best footy. Yeah. But I just couldn't fulfill that role because Hocko's so good at what he does. He's yeah. so good at controlling the games and his kicking game and he's he's so good at doing that and then allowing his five eight to, to run and do that. But see, I was trying to get Josh allow Josh to run by controlling the games and stuff, but because I wasn't controlling the game enough for him, he was trying to take over a little bit to control the game with me, which yeah, we both okay. just doing this cycle yeah. that just didn't work. Yeah. So it just, um, yeah, so it just didn't work for us. And we just couldn't pull the boys out of the slump. And then some weeks we'd play really good. And we'd be like, oh, you know, we're back. And yeah, then the next sweet. week we play shit. Yeah, like, oh, like, it's again. just consistency, you know? We just yeah. couldn't get that consistency of, of just putting good games together. So. And then, you know, when you're going bad, everyone starts pointing the finger. Oh, man. It's a hard, you know, it's the, yeah. it's the fullbacks, it's the wingers, it's, it's the coach. No, all right, let's get rid of the coach. Yeah. It's the, oh, and then it's, then it's the CEO, it's the board or whatever it is. Yeah, it's like yeah. everyone just starts pointing the finger. It's like, that's just how it goes. That's yeah. the, the process of it all. It's footy. Yeah, and it's, it's unfortunate that it, that it went like that because it's, well, it's not the way Des went, especially the way Des went, you know, like Des gave me my debut. Like, I've got a lot of time for Des. He's yeah. probably, or he's, 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 he's definitely taught me the most footy out of anyone he's, he's been my longest serving coach as a, yeah. as a senior player so um, and then so he sort of he took the took the bullet sort of thing for our performances and he got the cut and we're sitting in 2018 and we got a whole new crew you know what I mean so everyone's really excited now and so was that what was it like as a playing group with seeing how not what you know and you don't have to fully go into the details because I'm sure there's stuff more stuff going on but just as a playing group seeing Desi leave and how it kind of all happened was it kind of like look you know, he was just resigned and now he's gone. Like, you know, what was it like for you boys? Yeah, well, we, we, there was so much finger pointing going on that year. It was like, or not even finger pointing, but just outside noise. It was just yeah. so much like, oh, okay, oh, Fox Sports, you know, oh, um, Empire's getting released this week. Yeah. Or oh, Reynolds has been asked to move on or someone's been asked to move Graham on. Is, is someone, is yeah, there's now. always something going on. So yeah. it was just like, you end up, to be honest, you end up just coming on Monday going, oh, yeah, another story, like, yeah, whatever. whatever. Yeah. Then at the end, it was like, all right, uh, you know, Hasler's, gonna, Hasler's been asked to leave. It's like, okay, another story, whatever. Like, yeah. no, no one's act, nothing's actually happened yet. And then, yeah, the whole the whole thing, just the ball just kept rolling, man. It's like it's like the old saying, where, there, where there's smoke, there's fire, I guess. And yeah. just sort of, um, at the end of the day, 
Reynolds moved on. Um, he had an opportunity to stay, I think, but the, the the opportunity to go to the Tigers was just far too good for him. Like, yeah, and it was refreshing for him. He, he, I think, he really wanted to do it, and um, and obviously Graham, Graham took a hit just purely because of he's that kind of guy. He's just not a selfish person. He had a contract there, but he 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 just cares so much about people that he he um he took the took the hit to to drop the salary cap so we can get get going. Oh, really? So he. Could have he could have well, done. Well, he had a contract there, so he had the right to stay. Yeah, he yeah. certainly could have stayed, but he's just um he's very selfless, and he, he, he that's why he was our captain. He was just a selfless leader, and he said, you know what, I'll take the hit. He took the hit. Uh, a couple other blokes took the hit as well, and at that time of the year, and um we had a few salary cap dramas going on or whatever it was. I, that's sort of the business side of it. I don't yeah. really know too much about it, but um yeah, and then then Des dropped out. That was yeah. a battery. Is it? Hang yeah. On a sec. Oh, good. And then, um, yeah, and then, and then Desi, uh, we, I think we're, we're away. We're on holidays, actually. We're in the break. So, season had ended. We we're on, on the, in the break. And, um, yeah, we just found out that Desi, Desi, uh, unfortunately lost his job from, from the media. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, we just found out through the media. We, we, we found out that about an hour before we got a media release from the CEO. Fucking dead. So then, yeah, and they, then he, um, yeah, that's it. We 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 were under under our understanding where he would be in resign for two years, but yeah, yeah. So that then, he, but look, we're in a new chapter now, man. And yeah, but however way you look at it, it's um, it's just that it's just that sport. You know, it's yeah. just this sport where it's just what happens. Yeah. yeah, it's just what happens, and you're so immune to it now. Like, yeah, I'm, it's, it's like you're so immune to players moving on and coaches coming in and coaches going out. It's just it's just like. It's just footy. Cut yeah, it's like before the season starts, there'll be, there'll be a couple more movements for sure. Yeah. Like there's already coaches under pressure and it's, no one's, no, no one's kicked the ball yet. It's, it's crazy. Just, yeah, it's, it's just crazy, insane. man. It's just crazy how, how it works. But you just get so used to it, I think. You yeah. So. And did, so did Des messages and, or like did you contact or was it kind of just like... You no, know? nah, I think it was a bit of a sticky situation because obviously now they're in court. Like, yeah, okay. So I think... You it's, can't, it's, you it's can't a, put anything in right. Yeah. I, I don't know. It was just... Oh, I think it was just a bit of a situation where you've just, I don't know the the details of it. And oh, I think just like honest, when you do go to yeah. court, anything you say will be used against you. Like yeah, in, so, like if yeah. he rings the boys and someone says something stupid, yeah, or, yeah, yeah. or messages something, yeah. So he pro- it's just cr- it should be stupid. Yeah, to- and he's a super intelligent man, so he he probably is aware of that. So I, I think, yeah. um, yeah, that's all gone through. Through court, no, what the hell's so happening there? But that's so just, yeah, that's just what, it, like, like I said before, <laughs> yeah. it's, we're just in that game where it's got yeah. to this point where yeah, people are going to court over getting, like, you know what I mean? It's just crazy. It's just crazy. It's crazy. It's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, it's not, like, people get so mad about it too. Yeah, like, like, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's gonna, all going to unfold soon and then it'll, yeah. it'll just sort of just, see, it, that's the best thing about where we are insulated from it. Yeah. Because the way Dino's coming now too, yeah. he's, he's such a, people's person like he's just been so good at good at managing us as, as players and he's been like he's, he's very he's, he's just a very relaxed relaxed guy yep and so for you personally how's it been you know how's this preseason been and, and you know you're looking to play fullback and um is that something that you've been training there and you're you're genuinely dedicated to the craft of fullback now and and what you know what, where you're at with that yeah yeah well this preseason it's, it's been Apart from my first ever preseason, this yeah. is the most enjoyable one I've, I've had. Oh, really? It's okay. the hardest one I've had. Yeah. But it's the most enjoyable. It's just, I think it's just the whole refreshing thing, and it's it's learning a new um new new craft now. Like now, yeah. I am trying to play fullback. I've got to learn a whole new yeah. role. High balls. And yeah, do, like yeah, and that's even like, see, the high balls isn't. Like, everyone keeps saying that's like the high balls and the high balls. It's like yeah. yeah, that's that's hard, but there's so much. More to do. More, yeah, there's so much more to playing fullback that you don't really yeah, realise. Yeah, and yeah. this like you just get. I've got so much more respect for yeah. quality fullbacks now. Yeah, because it is so hard. It's the work rate's phenomenal. Yeah, it's the like, amount of K's you do. Yeah, yeah, it's just like it's a different kind of fitness. It's different. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. And yeah, that's where you've, I've just got so much more respect. I've always had respect for blokes like like Darbs and, and and Billy Slater, but yeah, you know, like those, they're just so good at what they do. They're such good fullbacks. Yeah. They're so good at what they do and. Um, Especially like, and Billy's really good at this too. But Darius's defensive ability at fullback, like his ability to be in the line at the right times and yeah, stuff, and their talk, is so good. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, so that's what I've been working on now. It's just really trying to focus on the defense, and yeah. we got some awesome 
mentors you can call them coaches or mentors however you want to put it but yeah you know, i look at i'm looking at them like mentors like because they, they're really you know showing me how to do it so it's been like super enjoyable man it's like just really enjoying getting in there and um just training and doing the work like it's everyone knows how hard you know how hard a preseason yeah they're, they're tough but yeah <laughs> if you can enjoy them as much as you can yeah it's yeah it's, it's you can make it a good work and if you can enjoy the worst part of footy because it's the worst yeah part that's of the footy, worst part yeah, yeah if then you enjoy sweet. the worst part then yeah it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good year um and so 12 months from now if you have a perfect year where are you 12 months from now what's the date say oh we'll be back by from, well, 12 months from now well, let's just say won the season, top okay. where, <laughs> but uh yeah now look 12 months from now we're um real successful year this year like yeah we're planning well i'm planning on having just just you know really tapping into that that so-called potential that i've always had yeah you know what i mean so i want to i really want to just piece together some consistent um consistent footy you know week in week out footy that yep. that that the really good players do like the quality players they're not like you know superstars all the time but they're just good every week and i think yep. it's just closing the gap between shit games and great games yeah that's a, that's what i want to do i just want to close that gap between shit games and, and bad games and uh, and good games and just having like you know, consistent games all, all year round and just having a good year at the dogs. And do you think that's been, you know, you come onto this, when you did have that year and it was like, wow, you know, you could be the next Queensland half. They were talking about you in the yeah, Queensland yeah. squad. Do you think that's been your biggest issue is like just the gap between the really good games and the bad games or what do you think? Definitely, it's, it's been? yeah, 100%. Like certainly, that's that's been it. I think that's the hardest thing about playing NRL. It's the hardest thing about playing NRL for me is the ability to to be consistent week in week out and like turn up week in week out like busted like you're Ready so to sore go. Yeah, yeah that's the hardest bit and that's where you see the best players like this the professionalism they do to to get themselves fit enough to to turn up week in week out you just yeah. have so much respect for people like that 100 percent. like yeah. guys like cam smith and that like, yeah i don't know like he's just yeah. been doing for like 350 plus games like yeah. this does it every week like, crazy Absolutely. that's and like you mentioned earlier like blokes like just lucky like your thurston's and yeah. just those guys who can just turn up every week and just perform every week 100%. and like even even every week like those blokes don't win your game every week but yeah. they're always good yeah, they're, they're always good like they're yeah. always they're always good. at that nrl standard yeah you know? there's always there's always yeah. just, just that quality bias 100 so percent. that's where you, you want to be you know somewhere like that's an extreme they're the best they're the future immortals those guys we yeah. just mentioned but you want to be up there on that sort of on that parallel just on that nice flat line of consistent footy Totally agree, totally agree. Um, ask all the boys, his favourite rapper of all time? Favourite rapper? I'll go through a few, but I like, um, you know, your Drake's, that's probably like, you know, Drake's pretty cool, he's a cool yeah. dude. Do you but, like his um, new song, God's Plan? Yeah, I do, yeah, it's yeah. Mad, eh? So uh, good. I like that, but um, who else, man? I'm just, yeah, the, I, I love I love R&B music, I love rap music. Yeah. So they're all pretty good. Uh, people like, yeah, Jay-Z's pretty influential guy, just the stuff yep. that he does off, off the, um, off the, out of the studio. Billionaire, yeah. billionaire. Yeah, just, this does cool shit too. Like, they just Crazy. do cool shit. I like it. Crazy. Um, favorite movie of all time? Man on Fire. I'm a big oh. Denzel Washington fan. Denzel's yeah, the man. Yeah, yeah. He's I'm number one. Yeah, 100%. 100%. It, that can be a bad movie if he's in it, it's good. Yeah, that's it. Did you watch Fences? Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so that's emotional. One of hectic. his most recent ones, yeah. So I like it. I like him when he does those... Um, like training suit, like, day. Yeah, like those roles yeah. or like even See, like, I like American in... Gangs, like you serious ones. Oh, like, that's I like crazy, those ones. Yeah. Like he's just so good at what yeah. he does. But yeah, like he's you good. said, they're all good movies. Man, YouTube, Denzel Washington, like inspirational or whatever, or, or yeah. a speech or whatever, and you'll find like all these mad YouTube clips of him just giving the best advice ever. Off the jump yeah, off. Yeah, it's fucking so good. So good. Bro, thank you. I mean, we. I feel like we could talk for another hour, but thank you so much for coming on, man. We've been oh. going for an hour. Um, so yeah thanks for your time brother and I uh, hope you play well next year and, and all of the drama kind of settles and you guys go on to do good things thanks for having me brother Battle. oh that's forward forward pass Mr Cummins you dickhead well I can't speak forward a mile he's let it go that one Stevie Wonder is in now five yards forward well I can't speak <laughs>